I have been meaning to make this video for some time, so here's a Beijo 2 e minimal jump follow up. Brief bit of context, on April 26th of 2020, I uploaded my video looking at how many jumps does it take to beat Banjo-Tooie. This was a culmination of my personal effort working through the game, some theory crafting, scripting, editing. It took many, many hours. I'm quite proud of the video, but it's not perfect, so in this one, I would like to share some information that has since come to my attention that seriously blows open this challenge and my understanding of the game as a whole. First, we'll just start with some helpful comments. As Dexter suggested, it is possible to collect the clifftop Jinjo with a clockwork egg. I thought this was out of reach, but in this short video by Chronikies, you can see the positioning needed. Using this as a guide, I got this on, sort of, my first attempt. Nice. Lootable shared the fact that you can actually collect the Jinjo in the Jade Snake Grove area of Mayhem Temple by simply kicking with the Golden Goliath. I never thought to try this, and I never realized just how high his foot goes, but it reaches super easily. There's a little correction by Rondo of Blood X, where it turns out you could just blow open the guest room door in Jolly Roger's Lagoon instead of paying two doubloons. It doesn't change the route, but it's good to know. A more important correction was provided by Scamuel. Turns out Klongo's potions are random, but only in the N64 version. In the Xbox 360 version, which is what I played for the video, they always follow a set pattern. He grows in the Spire Mountain fight, he goes invisible in Pine Grove, and he multiplies in Cauldron Keep. Also, I, I think Chris is right. Um, I called Bully and Bill and Delberta friends, but I guess they're actually partners. Anyways, uh, Baylor was one of a few commenters who mentioned YouTube creator Jinjo Vitus and their video titled Can You Beat Banjo Tooie Without Jumping? The video was uploaded in May of 2019, a full year before my video. That said, my video was created without ever knowing of or seeing Jinjo Vitus's video, but still, we came to a lot of similar conclusions using different methods and presentations. I think that Jinjo Vitus's video is worth a watch, so check it out using the card on screen or link in the description after finishing up this one. Also, uh, after my video was uploaded, I was reached out to by N64 video game speedrunner Falcon. Falcon brought to my attention a few things, like the fact that Banjo can actually grab onto climbable surfaces like ladders and ropes if you take damage, but in Talon Trot. It's so simple, and I never tried it, but it works. This means that you can get up onto the Dodgem Dome in Witchy World for the Jinjo that has been plaguing my nightmares ever since I released that video. Also, you can actually enter first person and shoot eggs while in Talentron, which is another little detail that is just totally new to me. Also, also, uh, thanks to a few clips shared by Falcon and my subsequent attempts at recreating them, I learned that you can actually just uh, enter the first person shooting mode and you won't slip down slopes. So this means that you can actually position yourself on the slide and clockwork kazooie yourself the jiggy at the top of Witchy World's Inferno tower thing, as well as get Slumber's Jiggy, both of which I previously thought were totally out of reach. Already my understanding of what's possible in this game has been expanded, but then Falcon reminded me of a video uploaded by Ring Rush in May of 2022. In it, Ring Rush details how one could collect nearly every single collectible without ever jumping or using flat pads, or using Kazooie's mid-air flutters. It's a wild video that I implore you to watch for yourself. That said, I would like to highlight a few spots in the video so that we can re-answer the question of how many jumps does it take to beat Banjo-Tooie? First, I'll give a quick refresher on the jumps I thought were necessary. There was one jump to reach the platform with the doorway leading to the plateau. Another was used to get to the jam jar silo for the build drill ability. A third jump was used to reach the Talon Torpedo Silo, an ability I thought was required to progress the game, but I don't think that's even true. The fourth jump was used to reach the Quagmire from the Wasteland, and the fifth and sixth jumps were used in the final battle to navigate a Clockwork Kazooie over the wire so that we could explode the Hagwon's batteries. Now for removing those jumps, uh, first, a bit of tech is needed called a Big Clip. The first bit clip found in a banjo game was actually accidental, encountered by the previously mentioned Falcon while idling in Witchy World's western zone. The 8-bit beast analyzed this clip and figured out the signs behind it, so it was named a bit clip. A bit beast, you know, it makes sense. That said, what is a bit clip? 
The terrain in Banjo-Kazooie and Tooie are made up of triangles. If you get Banjo to very specific points on the seam of some of these triangles, the game's algorithm will fail to detect Banjo as being above any of the adjacent triangles due to a rounding error. That means that these seams are essentially gaps in the collision that you can just fall through. Apparently, floor gaps are 0.00001 units wide and Banjo moves 700 units per second in Talent Trot, so the level of precision needed uh, means that reliable setups are required if you ever want to do this in an actual run with actual human hands. And the 8-Bit Beast and Ring Rush have both put together some viable setups, the videos of which you can find in the description. Now that you know what a bit clip is, it makes a bit more sense how Ring Rush was able to initiate a ground pound while standing on seemingly flat ground. It's because he actually technically was about to fall. Interrupting that ground pound with the skill stop honeycomb prevents Banjo from slamming back down, so he just instead gets sort of yotes up right where he needs to go. It's like magic, but with math. The build roll ability can be reached jumpless by grabbing the speedy shoes and activating the timed uh, gate button in Glitter Gulch Mine. The extra speed lets Banjo fall, peck, and ground pound to this ledge, and then the gate closing cutscene interrupts a ground pound resulting in the same upwards boost shown previously, letting you get the ability. Town Torpedo is reached using a big clip and a clockwork explosion, but it's more complex than that and you're better off checking out Ring Rush's video for an explanation. As for reaching the Quagmire, I don't actually know if there is a way to scale the wall without the spring shoes. Thankfully, there is another way into Granty Industries, namely the pipe uh, spewing toxic waste in Jolly Rogers Lagoon that leads to the room aptly named the toxic waste room. Here you can actually use a bit clip to fall through the floor and then immediately move and peck to get Banjo to enter the water. I recreated this myself using BizHawk and the game set position code included in the Banjo to A button challenge master document, which meant I was right there where I needed to be, no setup required, and even then I had to save states and lower the game speed to at least half because I could have been doing it wrong, but the window for having to peck before you're too low and then actually getting Banjo to start swimming down is really annoying and difficult, but it is possible. That's the important part. It is possible. And then Banjo can swim towards the Grunty Industry side with the spicy water, which will throw him up onto the appropriate ledge. Then you just climb up the ladder using a bit of Talon Trot recoil, unlock the front gate, and then head out through the main entrance and touch the fast travel silo and boom! Now I have access to Grunty Industries without jumping. As for the battery compartment in the final fight, Ring Rush's video doesn't offer any salvation. He does show how you can actually clockwork warp Banjo into that room, who can then grenade egg the battery, but then you're stuck. Exiting the room causes the final battle to reset. Either way, using the magic of math and science, it's possible to beat Banjo 2 in just two jumps. Crazy. All that said, please go check out the videos mentioned by Jinjo Vitus, Ring Rush, and the 8 Bit Beast for more Banjo goodness, and shoutouts to Falcon and the various commenters for their contributions and for you for watching. That said, outro time. Big thanks to my channel members for the support and a Mr. Patches size thanks to Captain Crayfish for being a super fan. If you enjoyed this video, why not leave a like, maybe subscribe, and all that other stuff. That's it for this one. Goodbye.